This module is about funnel plots with metaphor. So we're going to do two kinds of funnel plots, the ordinary funnel and then the trim and fill variety. A funnel plot is a plot of effect size by standard error or sample size. The idea comes from a sampling distribution. Usually these are inspected for symmetry and for heterogeneity. Trim and fill will look at the symmetry of the funnel plot and impute values and then uh, sort of say what if what happens if we had these extra studies. Um, I'm going to show you a couple different uh, transformations of some data and how different the funnel plot looks and the moral of the story is know your data and your transformations. The data I'm going to show you is uh, McDaniel 1994. It's one of the built-in data sets from Metaphor and I'm going to First, run it in Z and uh, plain funnel, trim and fill results, and then trim and fill funnel. And then I'm going to rerun the thing in R with the same kind of uh, analysis. So we have metaphor, we have XLSX. I don't need the, that now. I've got McDaniel 1994, and it's built in data set, and it shows you sample size and the correlation coefficient, and it has a couple of moderators and there are 160 of them okay so the first thing we do is uh, McDaniel results get the metaphor R is equal to R N is equal to N method is Dersimonian layered measure is Z cross so we're going to take the R to Z transformation of the correlations and here are the results we have um, tau is 16 heterogeneous Mean is 24, and the uh, confidence intervals from 20 to 27. Uh, with the random effects, you can see it's minus 09 to 56. So a pretty big interval there. All right, so um, I asked it for the funnel, and the funnel comes up in a separate window, and I'm going to resize it so you can see it here better. All right, so there's the... Um, funnel plot and the average is at 23, 24, something like that and you can see there is some excess heterogeneity and the studies seem to fall off a little bit more on the right side than they do on the left side. Um, but you know actually this is pretty well behaved. Most of the, the uh, studies are inside the limits that you'd expect plus or minus two standard errors. We have this guy way out here but it's a very small study. And these are correlations between scores on a job interview and subsequent job performance. Okay, so that's what it looks like if we um, just run the funnel plot. Now let's look at the trim and fill version. Okay, so um, here's the trim and fill funnel plot and you can see that it's inferred uh, a bunch of uh, studies on the low side to match the studies on the high side. And doing so, it has moved the mean back some. So let's look at the, the results here. Uh, the first time around, uh, I got the funnel by saying funnel, McDaniel results one, and then I got this prediction interval by saying uh, predict McDaniel results one. And now uh, McDaniel results two, comes from saying I want trim and fill for McDaniel results one. So I did the meta-analysis, I've got that object, and now I want to do the trim and fill on the results of the meta-analysis. Put it into McDaniel results two. Um, when I do that um, analysis, it tells me that it estimates 21 studies are missing on the low side of the study. So then it adds them, and now we've gone from 160 to 181 studies. Um, I square is 84, tau is 20. So we went from I square 79 and tau of 16. So because you're you're imputing studies all the way on the left side, it's going to increase the heterogeneity and it's going to increase tau. So the interesting thing here is that we've gone that now we've got a mean of uh, 19 from a mean of 24 and uh, confidence intervals now used to be 20 to 27. Now they're 16 to 23. 
And if you look at the credibility intervals, are very large. By imputing those extreme values, it sort of forces the tau to be large. Okay, so we saw the um, imputed values, and we moved from about 24 to 19 on the mean. So this is a, a sort of a what-if scenario. What if the uh, results had been more symmetric than they are? What, what if this is the result of publication bias, and we tried to fill in or um, compensate for that? What would what might we have expected to see? This isn't the actual result. It's a it's a sensitivity or what if kind of scenario. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Only I'm going to compute it in R. I've run the same analysis. We've got R I and I method DL. But now measure is core instead of Z core. And um, I'm going to put the result of a uh, metaphor into McDaniel results three. And now we get. Uh, an estimated tau value of 39, which is really quite large. The um, overall mean is uh, 24, and the confidence interval for the mean are 18 to 31. So um, what we had before were 24 and 20 to 27. Let's look at the funnel plot, and you see that it's far more variable now than it was in Z. And this is because the error for the correlation coefficient depends on rho, which is estimated by R. And so if you have a large value of R, you tend to get an artificially small value of the uh, error variance. Okay, so the trim and fill, it adds 31 studies to the right side instead of the left side. And <laughs> we get a tau of uh, 38. And uh, we have an, a, an average of up to 30 now. And the uh, credibility <laughs> goes from minus 44 to 1.05. But let's look at the trim and fill. All right, so it's filled in 30 some studies on the, on the right side, on the high side this time in order to uh, in order to ensure symmetry. Here the funnel plots are side by side. This is without trim and fill. So here it is in Z and here it is in R. And I want you to see this study becomes this study. Um, so you need to know what you're, what you're doing when you plot these things. And that's it for the funnel plot.